the GOP presidential debates. It's it's getting dirty, guys. Mm -hmm. Field of candidates continues to shrink, and the race for the presidential primary is focusing in on two candidates in particular. Fox Business hosted last night's Republican presidential debate, which put Donald Trump and Senator Ted Cruz at odds with each other, focusing on Cruz's clandestine loan from Goldman Sachs and the recent controversy surrounding Cruz's place of birth and whether it will allow him to even be president. Now, if you don't know, here's the deal. Harvard Law Professor Lawrence Tribe has brought to light the fact that Ted Cruz was actually born in Canada, not the United States, although his parents are naturalized citizens. Cruz has fired back, and he, he went on the defensive last night saying that under the current law, you are a naturalized U.S. citizen as long as your parents are, regardless of where exactly you were born. He brought into a comparison, you know, families of, uh, of soldiers mm -hmm. that they're born overseas. You know, a lot of times my aunt was actually the same thing. She was born in Wiesbaden, Germany, while my grandfather was stationed there in the Air Force. Mm. So uh, she was an American citizen. Uh, in addition, two front runners uh, traded jabs over Cruz's assertion that Trump has, quote, New York values. What does that mean? Well, he's saying that basically the values in New York City are socially liberal. Trump has fired back saying that the people uh, have, of New York have fought and fought and fought in the wake of 9-11. So what does this all mean? What does the New York values mean? Cruz is trying to, he's basically trying to lock in the evangelical votes, right? Mm -hmm. Why are those important? Well, because the Iowa and South Carolina caucuses right around the corner and historically those caucuses have been dominated by who? Evangelical voters. So uh, they're, they're getting very specific, very mm -hmm. getting, you know, a little dirty, dirty. A lot of people, Ted Cruz and Donald Trump thus far, they haven't been besties, but mm -hmm. there's kind of maybe been a bromance. Bromance yeah. is done. It's gone. Yeah. They are trading direct jabs at each other now. Uh, they, you know, obviously, they were not the only uh, people on the stage last night. Chris Christie, I thought, mm -hmm. actually did a pretty good showing. I like Chris Christie. He's, he's not the glamorous. He's not the... You know, he's not the flash in the pan kind of mm -hmm. Donald Trump. He's not as smooth as Ted Cruz or Marco Rubio. But, uh, you know, he's an interesting guy. He's mm -hmm. the kind of guy that says what he thinks. You know, like he's just what mm -hmm. everyone is saying, Donald Trump. But the difference is he's actually got good points. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because regardless, you know, how you feel about everything, everyone's kind of talking about this. I was looking online uh, this morning and... New York values was actually trending on mm -hmm. Google search because people are like, yeah, we know mean? it's a jab, <laughs> yeah, but, but we just don't know why. Yeah. And I, one of the things that really gets me is regardless how you feel about each um, candidate mm -hmm. on how you feel about what Trump says or not, he did um, at his rally on Wednesday night, mm -hmm. he, that weird little like patriotic the music video. man. Yeah, with the girls dancing. They were cute, but just a little weird for a rally. Um, he went off on his mic. Did you did you see that? Did he went off on the sound guy? I on heard the, I didn't yeah. see it, but I heard that he went he off. Just, he just his microphone was deleted, doing yeah. expletive deleted. Funny things, and he's like, I'm not doing this. This I'm not paying for this. This is stupid. Yeah, he was going off. That to me is what concerns me. Regardless of the issue, it's mm -hmm. it's like. He's got a little bit of a temper. You oh, know? absolutely. It's like things go wrong. I mean, trust, especially in TV, we know. Like, when it comes to those technological little things, it's a nightmare some days. You can't lose your cool on something es like that. Especially if you are president of the United yeah. States and you are dealing on an international stage exactly. with other people that don't care yeah. if you're a multi-billionaire. They don't <laughs> care that you're a real estate mogul. Yeah. They, exactly. they don't care. The only one that seems to care mm -hmm. is Vladimir Putin. And he's like... He's brilliant. Mm -hmm. Love him. He's great. But those are the things that concern me. And I've been there. I've been there when my microphone's not working. You just can't, you know, say, "Well, I'm not going to pay for this." Yeah. Like mm, there, I think was a different way to handle that. Yeah. Kind of situation. Just to tag this on before we head out of this discussion, guys, and move on. Want to say, uh, Lindsey Graham this morning, the first one he dropped out of the race. He's no longer mm -hmm. in it. Uh, he is now endorsing Jeb Bush, which oh. is which is telling you're saying, okay, well, Jeb Bush, Lindsey mm -hmm. Graham. What does that mean? He didn't have a great showing in the campaign, but. He is from South Carolina. Again, caucus is coming up mm -hmm. very soon, so his endorsement might mean something. Yeah, so anyway, keep happening. an eye out for that because that's going to start happening. Is is the uh, the Republican candidates drop mm -hmm. off the race? They're going to start turning their endorsements. So that's just the other part of the story. Started. Exactly. We're just that one gets good, that. really. <laughs> All right. After much controversy, Chipotle is cooking up a big push to win back customers. The company is launching a marketing campaign this month to reverse losses after a series of food scares. Now, Chipotle's sales plunged 30% after an E. coli outbreak in October. That was followed by 
a norovirus outbreak that sickened dozens at a Chipotle in Boston. Chipotle executives say the company is taking measures to reduce the risk of another food scare to, quote, near zero. I can admit I was a little put off by the mm -hmm. fact that the E. coli thing sure. broke, you know. But I still eat at Chipotle. Yeah. I'm part of those customers where I'm like, it's so good, I can't. Yeah. And, you know, honestly, it, it, it the reality is it could happen at any restaurant. Yeah. You know, it's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. I mean, Blue Bell is still dealing with, you know, oh, the hysteria yeah. outbreak, and they're potentially having to mm -hmm. rebuild. I mean, you know, that's a scary deal. Yeah. But it could potentially happen anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate when it, it just kind of seems to, uh, it, it opens a Pandora's box in many yeah. things. What scares me are the restaurants that are on par with it that we're not hearing about. Yeah, and it, it's know? funny too because I do think Chipotle has been very proactive about this. Yeah, you know, sure. they've taken a lot of heat, but at the same time, they're not denying anything. They're mm -hmm. saying, you know what, we're going to do everything we can. I was reading online somewhere that some, if not all, Chipotle's were going to close for one day so they can just kind of go mm -hmm. in and revamp everything and come out running. And I do think there's probably some very dedicated Chipotle lovers. You know, mm -hmm. this doesn't affect like me, <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know. It's it's hard because you're always going to think of that one time. You sure. Know, like, no, it's always going to be in the back of your head. Exactly. You yeah. can't really forget that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So we wish them the best, really. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the shutting down, I think that's a good thing yeah. to really just kind of say, we're doing everything we can. We're going to take and those daily losses. Seriously. We're mm -hmm. going we're gonna to take it seriously. Exactly. All right. Well, it looks uh, like weeks of suffering for your art could pay off big for Leo DiCaprio <laughs> and company at the Oscars. The Revenant leads the pack at the 88th Annual Academy Awards with 12 nominations, including Best Picture, Best Actor for DiCaprio, Best Supporting Actor for his buddy Tom Hardy, and Best Director for Alejandro, in, uh, Alejandro Iñárritu. Mad Max Fury Road, this one surprised a lot of people. It nabbed 10 nominations, including Best Picture, Best Director for George Miller, and Best Editing. Other movies on the nominees list include the critical darling Spotlight, the best comedy of the year. Of course, we're talking about The Martian, according to the Golden Globes, best comedy of the year, and the all-star dramedy, The Big Short. Who's missing from the list of nominees? Actors of color. For a second year in a row, Oscar has omitted stellar performances of African-American actors, and this year they had some really solid choices, guys. It included Idris Elba for Beasts of No Nation. He did not get nominated. Uh, Will Smith did not get a nomination for Concussion. Another surprise, as you saw there a few seconds ago, uh, the biggest movie of the year, Star Wars, mm -hmm. The Force Awakens, not getting a nod for Best Picture. Uh, whatever you think about the controversies, the snubs, the awards, mm -hmm. who's going to win it, is Leo finally going to walk away with some Oscar gold? You'll find out as the 88th Annual Academy Awards take place the 28th of February in L.A. Um, I, I, I have no, no comment. Well, I have a lot of comments, but I'm not going <laughs> to say them on air, as to why Idris Elba and Will mm -hmm. Smith at least did not get a nomination. Um, I, I got to tell you, when there was, was hubbub about Idris Elba taking over as James Bond, mm. I was so excited. Yeah. I would be front and center. I'm not a big Bond fan, but if that guy's playing James Bond, You'd I go? would be there opening day. I nice. love Idris Elba. Okay. He is such an amazing actor. Uh, for his work in Beasts of No Nation to not get uh, a nomination, mm -hmm. I think is a crime. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I, I don't really know what goes into, you know, who gets nominated or not, but sometimes I'm always a little like, what? I Especially if you've seen sure. if you've seen a really good movie and you're like, they have to, you know? And I know there has been a lot of good pictures that have been put, put out, mm -hmm. but I'm going for Leo. I think this is his year. It's got to be his gotta year. He's got to do it. Because <laughs> yeah. I've seen the memes with the bear holding the Oscar and everything. Yeah, like, exactly. They're already making fun of him, and it hasn't yeah. even started. And, you know, and he's up against some some really strong competition. Mm -hmm. Eddie Redmayne, you know, is uh, he's getting a lot of praise. Of course, he won last year uh, for his portrayal of Stephen Hawking. Um, and uh, what was also kind of surprising, you saw there in, in our video, Johnny Depp not getting a nod for Black Mass. Everyone mm -hmm. thought that J.D. would be getting mm -hmm. uh, another nod for this, uh, playing Whitey Bulger. No, he's off that list this year. So anyway.